Now, let's have a look at a clock movements example. So in these types of examples, the first thing we have to do is to have a look at the types of hands we have. So in this example, we have three types of hands. We have an arrow, a circle with its middle not being filled, and a star. So these are the three types of hands we have. So let's start with one hand first. So let's start with the arrow first. The arrow in the first diagram is pointing towards one. The second, it is pointing towards two. The third, it is pointing towards three. In the fourth diagram, it is pointing towards four. And in the fifth diagram, it is pointing towards five. Now, we have to have a look at what do we have to do to the number on the left to get the number on the right. So we have to add one to one to get two. To get from two to three, we have to add one. To get from three to four, add one. To get from four to five, add one once again. So this means to find out which number our arrow points towards in the answer, we have to add one to the five, which means we get six. Five plus one is six. Now we have to have a look at the answer figures. In the answer figures, we have to have a look at where the arrow points towards. And if the arrow points towards two numbers that are not six, then we cross those options off. So let's start with A. In A, the arrow is pointing towards six, so therefore A is five. In B, the arrow is pointing towards 6, so B is also fine. In C, the arrow is pointing towards 8, and it's not pointing towards 6, and therefore it's the wrong number and we have to cross C out. In D, the arrow is also pointing towards 6, so D is also fine. So let's move on to the next stand, which is a circle with its middle not being filled. In the first diagram, the circle points towards 6. In the second diagram, it points towards 8. In the third diagram, it points towards 10. In the fourth diagram, it points towards 12. And in the fifth diagram, it points towards 2. To get from 6 to 8, we have to add 2. To get from 8 to 10, we have to add 2. To get from 10 to 12, we have to add 2. And to get from 12 to 2, we also have to add 2. Because in clock movements, when you're adding, you're moving forward. So which means you're adding 2 to 12. You're moving two steps forward from 12 which means you land on 2. And to get from 2 to our answer, we also have to add 2, as you guys could see from the pattern. So 2 plus 2 will be 4. So that means if we find an option in which the circle is not pointing towards 4, then we cross the option off. In A, the circle is pointing towards 4. In B, it is pointing towards 3. And therefore, we can cross B out. In D, the circle is pointing towards 4 once again. So D and A are fine since the circle is pointing towards 4. Now, to find the answer, we have to look at the arrow with the star. The first diagram, it is pointing towards 8. The second diagram, it is pointing towards 3. In the third diagram, it is 11. In the fourth diagram, it is pointing towards 8. In the fifth diagram, it is pointing towards 6. So what do we have to do to the number on the left? To get to the number on the right. To get from 8 to 3, we have to take away 5. To get from 3 to 11, we have to take away 4. Because if you guys remember, when we are adding, we are moving forward. So that means when you're subtracting, you're moving backwards. So if you're subtracting 4 from 3, you're moving 4 steps back from 3. So you're going through 2, 1, and then 12, and then 11. To get from 11 to 8, you have to take away 3. To get from 8 to 6, you have to take away 2. So if you guys notice the pattern, each time you have to do 1 less than the previous step. So first time you had to do minus 5, then the second time you only had to do minus 4. Then the third time you had to do minus 3, and the fourth time you had to take away 2. So which means, to find that answer, if we follow this pattern, we have to take away 1 from 6. So 6 minus 1 will give us 5. So this means out of A and D, we have to find out which is the right answer. And we have to find out which of the stars point to 5. And as you guys could see, A points to 5, whereas D points to 10. And therefore, we could cross out D and we can choose our answer, which is A. And that means our answer to this question is A. Now to learn more non-verbal reasoning types, click the video on the right. And to learn the previous type, click the video on the left. So take your pick. Thank you so much for watching, please subscribe to my channel, I'll see you next time.